All right. Good morning, everybody. How's everybody doing today? Good. Man, that was sad. It's like almost 1030. How are you guys doing today? Good. Well, welcome to MVF. My name's Spud. I'm the youth pastor here. I'm so glad you guys are here. Um, I just wanted to let you know about a few things we got coming up. We've got uh, Ladies in Fellowship together. It's a women's ministry that they meet together, talk about Jesus, build a community, get to know each other. They're doing that on the 12th. So if you guys want to join that, look on the Church Center app for more details. And then also men, uh, EDC Poker Night on the 18th, right? Let's let's get going. Um, Knowing that David's doing it, there's going to be an amazing food. He's going to probably smoke something. So let's hope I see you guys there. And then also, if you guys like seeing this building clean, we're building a clean team. So we're actually going to have a meeting later this week on Thursday. If you're interested in it, shoot me an email, and I'll, let you, I'll fill you in on the details. We, can, we uh, have a great team that's getting built to keep this place clean and doing a little bit of maintenance. And we're, we're really excited because when we get that new building, everything's going to be worked out, and that place is going to stay spick and span, hopefully. Now, but then also, um, we've got lots of other things happening. So if you don't know, we have this thing called the Church Center app. It's an app that you can download on your phone, and you can look at everything's updated on that. It tells you what's going on. You can register for things. It's got emails and contact stuff. You can submit prayer requests. So I really encourage you guys to download that app. And then with that, uh, we've actually got a great speaker Dave Nelson, he's from K2. He's going to come on up here, and he's going to give us our message for today. So let's give him a warm welcome. MVF Poker Night? I am here on the wrong day, man. I got I to gotta make sure I know when that's coming. I'll come up and join you guys. Well, I, I, I'm here, right, because my understanding is everybody's sick. And so, and luckily it wasn't two weeks ago, because that was my wife and I too. We got the big C. How many of you got the big C already? Joined the team? All right. Wow, almost everybody. Um, in fact, I was actually supposed to speak at Mountain Life uh, two weeks ago and had to cancel because of, of COVID. So I'm glad to be healthy and with you guys today. Um, like I said, I was just here a, a few months ago, I believe, and just so grateful. Love you guys. Love this church. Love Shane. And it really is an honor to be with you guys today. So um, as I start the message, um, I'd love for you just to turn to somebody, think about this question. If you could have any superpower, right? You probably had this question before in a little context with a group of people, but if you could have any superpower, what is the superpower you would choose? Okay? And ter ter share that with somebody just around you real quick, what the superpower is that you would choose. All right, a few chuckles going on out there when you think about, oh, man, if I could really do this, that'd be fantastic. Throw, throw out to me what were some of the superpowers you'd want to have. Invisibility. A sneaky person. Who said that? <laughs> I'm sorry? Oh. <laughs> How about, what, what's another one? Invis what, what's another superpower? I'm sorry? Teleportation. Teleportation. I would love that, too. I, 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 Seriously, many times, right, you're out late and stuff. Man, Jesus, you know, Scotty, just beam me home. Wouldn't that be fantastic? That would be great. What's another superpower? What was it? Time travel. Time travel. Sweet. That would be fun. Okay, one more. Flying. I'm sorry? Flying. Flying. I, was gonna, I was just waiting. Like, that one always has to come out, right, that we want to fly. That would be so fun. All right, well, I'm going to share with you a superpower today that, uh, that I would love to have. And that is, I would love to be unoffendable. I would love to have a big UM on my chest, because I'm from the University of Michigan, actually. No, but I would love to have a big UM on my chest that just says, I am the unoffendable man. Can you imagine being able to be unoffendable? When somebody insults you, when somebody disagrees with you, criticizes you lets you down doesn't listen to you rejects you and hurts you and you are absolutely at peace and you are unoffended I want to tell you what man can you imagine the power 
that that would entail if you could be unoffendable can you imagine the power needed (laughs) to be unoffended and can you imagine in this world today because doesn't it feel like everybody's offended all the time this is i mean this whole cancel culture that we live in is unbelievable and so what kind of powerful witness would it be to the world that no matter what they did to you you could just be completely at peace and love them back i'm serious that is a super power so i looked this up i offended like when you're offended here's the synonyms see if you can relate to any of these angry (laughs) exasperated outraged annoyed provoked put out upset hurt okay how many of you were already one of those this morning no okay don't raise your hand because here's what's true if those are the things that come out of you when somebody offends you you are offendable and there's two main responses usually when we get offended there's anger and there's withdrawal and what's interesting both anger and withdrawal are relationship killers And as Christ followers, the main thing we do as Christ followers, that we're supposed to be doing, is we're supposed to be relational builders. But when you're offended, when you're offendable, man, it it just kills relationships. Unity, it really is interesting, you guys. If you can't get into all this, but I'm telling you, the, the hallmark of the Christian faith is unity and peace. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. And so even as I, when we were talking about this whole offendable thing, we were having a bunch of people coming over to our house. And um, I have a teenage son. He's 16 years old. And I, I don't know what my wife was thinking. She asked him to help clean the house, right? Like, I don't know what. She, and so I was in the kitchen and stuff, and she was in the back room. And all of a sudden, I catch ear, and Caleb was just moaning and complaining and, and then coming back at her, and Susie was coming back at her, and I don't know what it is. I, that's the one thing for me. I lose it. And next thing you know, I'm coming out of the kitchen. Don't you talk to your mom like that! You know, I'm just like busting out, and I'm screaming. By the way, I, this is the truth. I never got angry. I didn't. I, I just never got angry until I had kids. And, and I'm, not, I'm not even kidding you. Like, I used to just sit around and look at people and go, I don't know, I just don't get angry. But kids are supposed to honor their parents, right? And, and so anyway, and then it was so funny because we're like, we're in this intense thing. And my daughter, my oldest daughter walks in and she's just like, you guys, like, chill. And Susie all of a sudden says, she goes, okay, I am not being very unoffendable in this moment. And I'm like, yeah, I'm getting ready to give this message. <laughs> I guess God just wanted to give me an illustration, right? So sometimes when you get offended and somebody's not acting the way towards you that you want them to, man, it just rage will just come out of us. But I also, I also operate in just the opposite way. I was at a gathering of these national leader, Christian leaders years ago. In short, very, I'll just make this very short. I have never felt more unnoticed in my life. It was the, like, I, I'd walk, there'd be a few people talking, and I'd come up and just go, hey, and they wouldn't even turn to include me in their circle. I, I, I mean, I just feel like, okay, obviously you want to have nothing to do with me. Now, in that moment, I didn't go, hey! Right? No, you know what? I, I literally, I'm like, I just turned around. I just went up my room and just closed the door. I'm like, I don't even, because sometimes when you get hurt or when you get offended or when you get rejected, it just hurts too much, and so you put up a wall. So some of you right now are wall builders with your, because you're feeling offended. And your relationships are struggling. And some of you have said things and been enraged, and you've responded in kind. This came, and you came right back at them, and your relationships are really suffering right now. I just want to tell you, man, as I study deeply into this, I don't know if there's anything where we need supernatural power more than in being able to be unoffendable beautiful thing is jesus is unoffendable in first peter 2 23 it says when they hurled their insults at him 
he did not retaliate. When he suffered, hey, isn't that great? So when somebody offends you, what do you do? You suffer. It does hurt. So Jesus actually was insulted when they're hurling insults at him, and he's suffering. He says, but when he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. Christ suffered for you, so that you, as to leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. Can I, so I just want to give you some great hope today. If you are a Christian today, what does that mean? It means you were baptized into Christ. And he is the only unoffendable man. He does have a big U-M on his chest. And so when you get baptized into him, Jesus can actually give you and I the power to be unoffendable. In fact, I would say we can be and we're called to be unoffendable. Now, can you imagine in your marriage with your kids, with some coworkers, maybe with people right in here, that you are able to be unoffendable. You guys, this is so important. It's important for you <clears throat> because can you imagine that happening and never spiraling down <laughs> into anger and bitterness and defensiveness or not building walls? Like, that is so important for you. And it's important, though, for everybody around you because let's just, can we just admit it? Some people are very offensive. <laughs> they just are. Some people, they're, they're so, you know, we used to tell our kids all the time in elementary school, like, man, we're so sorry, but hurt people hurt people. That's just true. And there's a lot of hurt people in this world. But here's the beautiful thing. If you're unoffendable, it, it's so important because when they hurt you, which they're going to do, if you just come right, if you build a wall and distance yourself from them, or if you lash right back at them, it, the cycle just keeps continuing. But when they hurt you and you are, it's impossible for you to be offended and you can bring peace and actually love them back, you know what it does? It stops the cycle. It actually dampens this fire. So it's important for you, but it's important for the people who are offensive. And maybe most important, it's important for Jesus because this, maybe more than anything, is how we could show Jesus to the world for his glory and for his namesake that people would run into the kingdom of God when they run into you. So I'm going to share with you today, I'm going to take you on a journey that I had a, a few months ago on this topic. And I'm just going to tell you, what I'm going to share with you today has absolutely been transforming my own personal life just in the last three months. And here's what's cool about the Word of God, right? The Word of God is useful. So 2 Timothy 3.16 tells us the Word of God is useful to, for teaching, for rebuking, correcting, and training. So, <clears throat> and what I'm going to share with you taught me something new. That means when you learn something new, I think for some of us you're going you're gonna to hear something new today. Because it was for me at least three years ago. I've been in ministry 34 years. And I'm like, what? <laughs> so, and it also can rebuke you. For some of you right now, you are very offendable. You, you, you know your walls are high or you've hurt many people with your, with your anger. And, and, and so sometimes, and rebuke isn't like, you, <laughs> no, it's just like, hey, stop, stop. And that's what Jesus had to tell me. And then correct, he corrects us. And sometimes we just think wrongly about stuff. And Jesus, the word of God helps us to think rightly. And then it trains us. And that's what this, what I'm going to share with you is this has been training me. It's helping me to put, what, when you do training, what do you do? You do something over and over and over again. That's training to the point where you can actually do it. And I, I, I just want to pray real quick. Jesus, as much as you have been changing me in the last few months through this passage of Scripture, I ask today, that your word would be powerful for people today. Just in this group, in this room right here, 
the power that could come out of this room if we would all be unoffendable. But Jesus, we can't do it without you. Equip us today for every good work. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so here's what I'm, uh, I'm gonna share with you today. Here's my phrase I want you to go home with today. This is crazy. No one can stop you from loving them. Nobody can actually stop you from loving them. People have a lot of power. They have no power over you to stop you from loving them. Nobody. All right? So Romans chapter 8 is where we're going today. This may be my favorite chapter in the Bible. Just crazy, crazy good stuff. Um, so I'm just going to read this section, and then I'm going to tear it apart for us, okay? Romans chapter 8, starting with verse 31. He says, what then... <clears throat> Shall we say in response to these things, beautiful things written before this? He says, if God is for us, who can be against us? And I want to say, lots of people. <laughs> right, right? I'm like, do you want a list? Uh, he who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, won't he, how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things who in this, in this beautiful who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen again many people but it is God who justifies so their charge means nothing who then is the one who condemns oh my goodness they're everywhere no one why? Because Christ Jesus, who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is interceding for us. So who shall separate us from the love of Christ? All the accusers, all the condemners, all the criticizers, all the people, the offensive people, they can't separate us from the love of Christ. Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword, as it is written, for your sake, we face death all day long. We're considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No. Uh-uh. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor... You, can, you get like, Paul's like, okay, can I think of anything else? <laughs> whatever you're facing today, whatever seems so offensive to you and so powerful against you, he's like, nothing can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord bring it. That's what I say. If that's true, then bring it. So let's look at this again. He says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Nothing in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Well, what does that mean? Okay. I, I meditate. So I love, I, every morning, I just get up with Jesus. I love it. I love spending time in his word, and I love just, just soaking in it and letting him speak to me every day. And when I got to this passage, I meditated very deeply on this whole thing because I'm like, okay, God, help me with this. Well, what does this mean? It means that God, no matter what happens, no matter what circumstance you're in, no matter what's going on, God is loving you. He is. Like, it can be super dark and super painful and whatever the circumstances is. But man, when, when these powerful people come against you, it's not like God's up there going, oh my gosh, I don't know what to do. No, he is loving us in everything. I'm baptized into Christ. And if you're a Christian, you are. This is your reality. You're in Christ and he's inside of you and he is love. There cannot be a moment, you guys, when God, the almighty God, far above whoever it is that's criticizing you, isn't 
loving you. That's what's true in every situation. So, with every person who offends me, as I was meditating on this, so whenever somebody is offending me or hurting me or criticizing me or rejecting me or letting me down, whatever they're doing, in that moment, God's up there going, man, I love you. I'm loving you right now. And so my application, and this is what I do sometimes with this, what I did with this is I, I, I take my phone, and because uh, how many times a day do you look at this thing, right? And, uh, and I actually put phrases on my phone so I see it every, many, many times a day. So my application for this, after I meditate on this, is on my phone I put, how is God loving me right now? <laughs> how is God loving me right now? Here's the first thing I want you to understand. There isn't a moment, there is not a moment when he's not loving you. You are dearly loved, child of God. Even when you're in pain, even Jesus, when he suffered, he entrusted himself to God because he knew his father loved him. So here's what was funny. I get done with an amazing quiet time. In fact, Susie and I were actually up in Park City. We were just doing a night away, and I was sitting outside enjoying the beautiful view that's up here. And right after, this is crazy, right after I got done with that, I get a phone call. So I grab it, and it was somebody um, calling me concerning another person who has been super upset with me, incredibly angry at me. Accusations and condemnations flying a plenty <laughs> towards me and this is a hard relationship for a long time so right after i get done with this this person calls me and says hey i just want to bring you know they had to bring up another situation that was going on with this person right after my quiet so so what did i do in that moment well i went right back to my quiet time i said how is god loving me right now no i didn't do that <laughs> what did i do <laughs> like, 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 seriously, like every, every offense, every pain and suffering that I've been through this thing just freaked me out again. <laughs> and I started worrying and I started fretting and, I, and with this certain person because it hurts so much, I, usually I just put it on my wall. I'm like, oh, I don't want to deal with you anymore. And that's exactly what I did. Can I just tell you, this is not, you're not going to get this message today and go, hey, I'm unoffendable now. Well, maybe you will, but you, if you are, you're better than me. <laughs> This is hard to be unoffendable. Even when God speaks to you directly about it, I realize, wow, I got a long way to go. So the next day, I pull open Romans 8, and I'm ready to go on because to the next section, and all of a sudden, this, I, I don't know if you guys, can I just, man, God is so real. He's so intimate. He's so speaking to us all the time. And so I open up the Bible to go on the next thing, and I, I feel this nudge. I, I've never heard God's audible voice, but thoughts, right? Just come, That's how God speaks to us. He just gives you thoughts, and you know they're not yours. And so this thought came to me, and it said, look over this. You missed something in this section. And I had meditated deeply on every passage, and then all of a sudden I look down, and I go, why didn't I meditate on this one? So I just wrote it down, and I'm like, okay, let's, let's think about this. And it's Romans 8, 37. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Now, how, how, many, of you ever, how many of you ever heard that verse? Okay, the only few, oh, that's, dude, that's a, that's, like, if you hang around in, in church very often, what a great verse, right? We're more than, con you probably sing worship songs, you know, about being more than a conqueror in, in Jesus. I've been in ministry for 34 years. I read that verse. I'm just going to be totally honest with you. I sat there with God, and I'm like, I don't even know what that means. I've worshiped it. I've sang it. I probably taught it. And I'm like, I don't know what that means. What Jesus, what does it mean to actually be more than a conqueror? in all these things so i just asked him i said man please help me and this i want to tell you i feel like he opened my eyes to something i can't wait to share this with you here we go here's the truth um at the base level if i'm more than a conqueror at the base level that means these things can't destroy me right if you're more than a conqueror okay whatever came against you didn't defeat you that's the base level so <clears throat> These people, these things, these accusations, condemnations, 
they can't actually be against me, right? That's what the scripture said. Who, 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 if God is for you, who can be against you? Well, what they're saying is, sure, people can come against you, right? But, but that's like, um, I don't know, the whole reason we're even out here in, in Salt Lake City is I'm from Detroit, and Luther Ellis, you guys, anybody know, remember Luther Ellis? Okay, well, he played football here at the University of Utah. He's six foot four, 305 pounds, okay? When you play basketball against Luther, <laughs> you don't move him, right? It's, he comes against you, he takes you down, right? If I come against Luther, it's like, I'm like a fly to him. What the Bible is saying is people might come against you, but you're more than a conqueror, so God's for you. That means, as I said earlier, they can't, they can't actually do anything against you. You guys, they can't. No one can stop you from loving them. So, so and that's what hit me. It's like, they can't stop God from, well, first of all, they can't stop God from loving me. That's great. But then I thought about this. They also don't have any power to keep me from bringing the kingdom of God into that situation. So they can be accusatory and critical and demeaning, proud and arrogant towards me. But just because they're doing that towards me doesn't mean that they can keep me from bringing the kingdom of God into that situation. Okay, how many, how many of you have ever said this? You make me so angry. Did you know that's not true? No, it means you're angry <laughs> and they just push the right button to have it come out. Because the same person could have do something to another person and that person might not even respond with anger at all. So no one makes you angry. You are angry. <laughs> and they just got it out of you. But nobody can make you be that. And then I thought, they can't actually stop me from being like Jesus. They can't. So let's take a look at Jesus again. Nothing ever stopped him from being union in union with his Father and bringing the kingdom of heaven to earth. That's why he's holy and perfect and can be our Savior. That's why he's God in the flesh, because nothing ever, ever stopped him from being in union with the Father and bringing the kingdom of God into every situation. And in the midst of of the insults being hurled at him and the rejection and the crucifixion even. Jesus loved him. No one ever stopped Jesus from loving them. Hey, side note. There's nothing you will ever do <laughs> that will keep Jesus from loving you. Isn't that good news? He is unoffendable. And if you're a Christian, by the way, he's already taken all of your offense. By the way, uh, no one's offended Jesus more than you, if, in case you didn't know. <laughs> right? <laughs> How many times have you not listened to him? How many times have you done stuff that you know he doesn't want you to do? How many times have you ignored him? I, uh, oh my goodness, it's, it's limitless, right? And yet, every time you offend him, he goes, yep, and I've already taken care of that. And forgiven you. He just looks at you today. Can I just, in case you feel like you've offended him too much today, can I just tell you, he's unoffendable towards you. No one could ever stop Jesus from loving them. You can't either. And that, for me, is the power to be able to be unoffendable towards another person. Can I give somebody else what Jesus gives me? If you possess in your soul the grace and the mercy and the forgiveness of an undefendable God, if that's full in your heart, then when somebody offends you, that's what can spill out of you is grace and mercy and love. Nobody could stop Jesus from loving them. And Jesus is inside of me. So I'm just going to tell you this. This is true about you. If you, want it, if you want it. Is you can walk out these doors with a conviction inside your being. You, you could look at anybody in this world and say, you 
can't stop me from loving you. That's superpower. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Nothing in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that's in Christ. So here's, here's the main thing that switched for me. Every time I'd read that passage for 34 years, it's been like, oh, that's so good that, you, that, that, that God will always love me no matter what. And that, it does start there, you guys. It does. But here's what the Holy Spirit showed me, and this was the key that absolutely changed me. It says, nothing can separate us from the love of God that's in Christ. It doesn't say, nothing can separate you from God's love for you. It simply says, nothing can separate you from his love. Can I tell you a secret? He doesn't just love you. He loves the one who's accusing you. He loves the one who's criticizing you. Oh, by the way, if you've been on the other end and you're the critical person and the judgmental person and the offensive person, he loves you. So all of a sudden, what Jesus, what God was showing me through the scriptures, dude, you've only been thinking about yourself and the fact that I, I, I can't, you can't be separated from my love for you, and that's true. But here's the other thing. You can't be separated from my love of that idiot. Now, Jesus doesn't call him the idiot, but you are. Nothing can separate you from my love for that person. And so therefore, that person, no matter what they're doing to you, they can't stop you from loving them because I love them and I'm in you. Do you guys see this? Like that is the superpower right there. And that changed me. Oh my gosh, you guys, a conqueror. You are more than a conqueror through Christ. So a, and a conqueror doesn't endure atta an attack. <laughs> That's not a conqueror. He doesn't survive an attack. That's not a conqueror. No. What's a conqueror do? What's he do? He wins, man. <laughs> he doesn't survive. He actually wins. He defeats the enemy. He takes him down. And then we're even more than that. Oh, my Lord. So when people accuse, condemn, attack, persecute, criticize, reject, or ignore, it's like that happens to one who's in Christ. And what does Christ do? It's what we do. We counterpunch them with love. Bring it. Man, I love you. What happens to that person? Like, whoa, wait. That's not what's supposed to happen. I'm supposed to make you angry. I'm supposed to demean you. I'm supposed to minimize you. Yeah, but you can't because, like, I'm a child of God. Right? When I thought about this, I, I was just like, people can't offend you when you know who you are. What's your name? I'm sorry? Jason. Hey, Jason. Jason, I think your pink shirt is incredibly ugly. What do you, what do you want to say to me about that? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> well, first of all, you're in denial because you're not wearing a pink shirt. Literally, like, I, I, sometimes I think people come at us and say, your pink shirt is ugly, and he could look back at me and go, I'm not wearing a pink shirt. Yes, you are, and it's ugly. You guys, it's, See, literally, you could just sit there and go, okay, well, if you want to think I wear a pink shirt and I'm ugly, then go ahead, because that's your problem, not mine. When someone comes at you and tries to demean you or minimize you or criticize you, and you're a child of God, they couldn't do that to Jesus. Why not? Because he's like, man, I'm the son of God. <laughs> doesn't matter what you think. doesn't matter what you say. I know who I am. What you say has no effect on me. I'm just going to love you. Oh, you guys, that's what you and I can do. We can become that when we know who we are. It's amazing. No one can stop me from loving you. No, in all these things, you are more than conquerors. This is very important. Through him who loved you. See, I know this, man. I'm very offendable. I get hurt. And so do you. But I also know Jesus is inside me. And it's through him. It's through his love in my heart for me and for others. And I have. My, through my life, oh my goodness, I've failed miserably at this. I've been withdrawn and avoided and hesitated in engaging people who are hard, and, which is obviously no love. And then I've also gotten super angry. But man, I want to learn what it means to share in the sufferings of Christ. When he suffered, well, I'm going to suffer too. That when he took our offense, he absorbed it, 
and then he forgave it, and then he loved us. That's laying down his life for us. And I'm telling you, if we will do that for other people, you will live a free, you will, you will be free, man. Nobody can stop you from loving them. And if you're a person full of love, you're free. And I'm telling you, you will change that person's life. It's how your life got changed with Jesus was through grace. And you, God will give grace to you to give it to another person and it will change them. And man, um, I, I've so experienced this. Like, so when, when uh, just a few examples real quick, like, like ever since, like I, I just have some people um, who, who in my life who are really important to me and I've just sensed them pulling away from me. And not, not responding to me, not initiating any more to me. And you know what? That hurts. <laughs> that hurts. So you know what I, you, so you know what I was going to do? <laughs> I was just going to, oh, I'm going to pull away from you then. And if that's what you're going to do, then that's what I'm going to do. And then all of a sudden I'm reading this, I'm going, okay, hold on. No, I can be more than a conqueror in love. Just because that's what they're doing doesn't mean that that's what I have to do. Don't repay evil with evil, right? <laughs> repay evil with good. And so I'm more than a conqueror. So instead of avoiding them and putting up my wall and feeling hurt, I'm like, okay, I'm diving in. <laughs> and I text them and I set up a meeting, let's go have coffee. And I move in because I just finally realize you can't stop me from loving you. Even if you are kind of hurt, whatever, don't want anything to do with me anymore. I want something to do with you. So I initiate you guys, right after this happened, like a couple weeks after this, I ran into a person, and we had made some decisions with, with the church that, that hurt this person. And I just want to tell you, man, I walked in, and we, we, weren't, we didn't even know we were in the same building, and we ran into each other. And I'm telling you, probably three times in my life have I ever been so lambast, lambasted, screaming at me yelling at me i mean hurling insults and condemning it. i mean just and then more people came in some of my staff actually walked into the room and they kept going i mean it was like horror i'm like oh my gosh he left and i went up the stairs and all i could uh, and, and all i could hear was what are you gonna do dave what are you gonna do dave be more than a conqueror conquer them with love so all I did was sit there and I go okay how did we hurt him and what does it mean to love them? and all I could feel man and I want to tell you in the past if I've been treated like that I'm like <laughs> put on my wall put on my wall not this time Jesus is like I don't have any walls with anybody tear it down and love him and that's what I did and he received it and we're reconciled. You guys, this is amazing. I had something happen this week. I was in a meeting with some people, and it wasn't involved me, but they had a blow up. Right in the midst of our meeting, had this huge blow up. The meeting lasted 10 minutes, it's supposed to be like two hours. <laughs> and all of a sudden, I, went, I woke up the next morning. I'm like, what are we doing? And I just felt like Jesus said, hey, it's all about love. Get, lead them in conquering love. So we got together two days later, and I just said, guys, here's the deal. We're followers of Jesus. I know you guys love each other, but we have to love him. And we just said, that's what we're going to do. He died so we would love each other. And we just said that we took communion together and we go, we're going to conquer this thing with love. And we did. And we end up having an amazing meeting. Jesus died, you guys, the very will of God purposed in Christ. This is Ephesians 1, 9. The very purpose of God, the will of God purposed in Christ by his good pleasure was to unite everything. Peacemakers are children of God. Hey, no one can stop you from loving them. No one can stop God from loving you. You can't even stop God from loving you. Own this. Believe this. So here's what I want to tell you to do. A few steps. If you're super offended by somebody right now, and your wall is up, or you know you've been super angry, first thing you do, is you just tell, just tell Jesus, Jesus, I can't do this. He's like, I know. Just confess it to him. I don't love this person. He goes, thanks for sharing that. Because he says, if you confess it, 
I'll forgive you, and I'll cleanse you. So if you'll just tell Jesus, I can't do this, he'll go, thank you. That's why I came, because you couldn't do it. I will empower you and give you the grace and the love. I will pour my love inside your heart. You just have to believe that you're more than a conqueror. You are through my love for you and for that person. And then ask him, what does it mean to love them? What does it mean, Jesus, to love this person? He will tell you. And then take that step, super scary, and then watch. And supernatural power from heaven. You will be a superhero. You will have supernatural divine power to love, okay? So we're gonna take communion now. How beautiful, what, what perfect time to actually take communion. Because when, well, I, can I encourage you, as you're led in communion today, Jesus said, hey, this is my body broken for you, right? When you offended me, I laid down my life for you, and I love you. I love you, and I'm in you. When you guys take it and you eat it, you're supposed to remember, Jesus' life is in me to empower you to be unoffendable. Take and eat it like that. And then drink the cup, receive forgiveness, and receive the power to forgive others. And you'll be undefendable. All right, let's do it. All right, guys. We're going to move into our time of communion, but before we do that, I just want to thank Dave Nelson for coming up here. Um, I, I, I get the blessing of getting to work with his youth team quite often. They're phenomenal. I love them. And it's so great that we have a church family that, that extends beyond the Heber Valley, right? I mean, God's church isn't just Mountain View. It's not just K2. When we come together as churches, a church family that we can rely on each other, it, it's such a, a world maker. It's such, it changes worlds. And I just want to thank Dave. Just, it's awesome. I love getting to know him more. So thank you so much, Dave, for coming up here. But like I said, we're going to move into the time of communion. And I just want to just inspire you guys and, and lead you into thinking about what communion is. Communion is, is remembering that God's body was beaten in our place. He was beaten for me and he was beaten for you. His blood was poured out on the cross for my sins and for your sins. And we get to take this time and we get to remember the great thing that Jesus did for us. We get to think of all the things that are in our life where we're going wrong, where, where we just fall short of God's glory. And we get to remember right now as a community. We, we can take some t silence and just think about those times in our lives that God died for that moment. Whatever it is in your life, whatever baggage you're carrying, whatever sins and struggles are going on in your life, God died on the cross so that those things will not be permanent. Right? Those things are temporary because God's glory conquered it. Just like Dave said, God's glory conquered all evil. It conquered death. And that's what we're remembering today. So when we drink that cup, and when we eat that bread, just remember that God is the conqueror. God is the conqueror of whatever you're going through right now. I'm going to read a scripture, and then the band's going to play. So this is 1 Corinthians 11. It says, For I pass on to you what I received from the Lord himself. On the night when he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it into pieces and said, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup from the wine after supper, saying, this is the cup of, in the new covenant. Wow. This is the, wow. Sorry, guys. <laughs> this cup is the new covenant between God and his people. An agreement confirmed with his blood. Do this in remembrance of me as often as you drink it. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. So let's pray, and they're going to come up and, and serve this. And we're just going to take a moment with ourselves between you and God and just remember these things. So God, we just ask you to bless us. Bless this communion that we can use it to remember you and what you did for us because you are a conqueror. You conquered all, Lord, and there is nothing in our life we can't conquer. We just thank you for doing that, Lord. We say these things in your holy, holy name. Amen. <laughs>
Your love never fails 